Hello, folks, and welcome back. Let's get this uh, new episode started here. An enemy Go right back into detected, our new little uh, mission it's here. Back to mission three. Everybody should recognize it pretty well. G zero four. Just turn the sound down on my end here. Skip past all this cutscene. We've already seen this again. Anyways, since we've already gone through the what if section of the thoroughbred missions, let's go ahead and look at the actual canon side of the story. To which we need to go back to mission three if it ever decides to load here. I don't know why the load times are so bad. Uh, Fraps used to do that to me a lot. Was it would increase the load times uh, drastically until I would turn it off and on again. But just the regular PlayStation 2 game seems to take its sweet time loading. Anyways, like I said, we're back at Mission 3 here, so we don't unfortunately have uh, Gundam G05 booster Ford mode, I'm which watching. means that we're a little bit less capable. But for this mission, I you know we don't have to really worry about that. As I said when we first went through Mission Enemy 3 here, suits. we really don't have to get a very good Supplies rank in order to get the cannon uh, cannon storyline. For the most part, this is going to be exactly a, uh, exactly the same thing as the last time, especially for part for the first part here. All we have to do is make sure that G04 doesn't you know bite the dust. All we all know that he's going to, but we got to keep him from doing it on our watch. So I'll start things off and just wipe out all the Rickdoms and all the Gelgoots and Zaku 2s that come out of nowhere to try and take a bite out of the armor level for G04. 40% left for maximum power I think I may have solved a couple of my small problems I've inadvertently stumbled upon with my new recording device is that it can uh, capture the video in three different formats. Uh, MPEG 4s, which is what I was originally trying to use because, well, I like MPEG 4s, they're easy enough to work with. Uh, .ts files and uh, .m2ts or MPEG 2ts files. Unfortunately, my MPEG, or my MPEG 4s weren't working too well and I was actually having quite a bit of trouble getting them into my rendering software without a hitch. With episode four, or the, uh, we showed the ending for the what if scenarios for Thoroughbred. The last, or that one little ending movie just didn't play and it froze up and all you could hear was a sound. That was an example of some of the glitches I was getting with that. Now it has to do with the specific type of, uh, of MPEG-4 that it's actually using. Uh, there's different styles of them and then I just unfortunately got one that my rendering software written like. So I have to go around and do this in a couple of different ways. But anyways, we've successfully completed part A here and now comes the Fun part, I guess. We'll go ahead and watch this cutscene again. It's probably one of the, one of the well done ones here. Is it just me, or is it when the mobile suits are stationary, they don't look too bad animation wise? But when they start moving, it just. Like there, that looks pretty good. But the moment they start to really move around, it's just. Uh, the, it looks like it's rushed. No, duo, I mean, uh, loose, don't die. Lieutenant Luce, please respond. Lieutenant Luce! Luce! Well, there's your problem right there. You've come with a, uh, come down with a sudden case of death. Alright, now in comes combat. the interesting part for this. We you. have to get below an A rank in Smart order to enough, progress Lieutenant along Lord. the canonical storyline. And to do that, we have a couple of different away, methods. The one I try to use plan. is to just weaken all the mobile suits that we're going to fight until our unnamed... Um, Federation Mobile Suit Pilot offers to help us, in which case I'm going to have him go ahead and help us and let him take most of these mobile suits down just to keep my score from getting too low. You can also do this the same way if you want to like blow yourself up and just take part of your retry bar down, but that takes a long time. So when he finally does pop out of nowhere and ask for support, take it and just go ahead and let him do some uh, pot shots at him. His aim is absolutely atrocious sometimes. They could literally be five feet in front of him and he'd still miss him with the cannon. So just weaken him to the point where he can get uh, one or two shots down the line and he'll be okay. Now, I did end up destroying a few of these by accident. I didn't want to do that, but I did anyways for it. We've got a little bit of room to play with. Like I said, you only have to get below an A rank, so we can get even a B rank and it should still progress us along the can uh, cannon storyline. It's also a good mission to make uh, liberal use of the Vulcan head ca uh, cannons from the G05. 
They're not very powerful, and that's the point. We just want to weaken them a little bit at a time. Repeat, we've taken too much damage to deal with any more enemies. Lieutenant Ford, destroy as many enemy units as possible before their fleet counterattacks. We'll recover For the most part, you're just going to be going through wave after wave of these things, and just rinse and repeat with the same thing. If you take damage, even if you blow up, that's not a big deal. You're, you're still going to be... Uh, wanting to use the retry, then you'll take your score or retry score down just a little bit more. Always helps a pad. So long as you just don't give up, there's really no way to fail this part of the mission for it. Excellent. Lost my shield there, didn't really need it. See, look at this. It takes forever to actually zone in on one of these enemies. He's still fighting that Gelgu. But they're not meant to be really that helpful to begin enemy with. It's kind of more of a be careful. more targets for the enemy to fi uh, fire oh, upon. I can't die here. Go on, hit him. Uh, I don't know why this is supposed to be the cannon ending for this or the candy uh, cannon the uh, candy storyline. That's what I meant, folks. I don't know why this is supposed to be the cannon way to get into the uh, cannon storyline because it it just is is drawn out and tedious. Maybe if you were just starting off in the missions and you had trouble with it, I could see this being something for it, but I don't know. It, it just seems to be more of a pain in the ass than the what-if route. Come on, hit him already. Jeez, thank you. Hey, you got two in a row. Holy shit. Anyways, cut the scene. And we'll see here about the little movement problem. See, it doesn't look as good when they move around. All right, got a D rank. That is absolutely fine. You don't have to worry about wiping out our S rank from before because it only takes the highest rank you've ever gotten and keeps that on record. So you can feel free to experiment any way you please without having to worry about your record going to shit. Anyways, stage four. With the decision to commence Operation Star One, many of the Federation's space fleets begin to converge on a Bawa coup. Meanwhile, the Thoroughbred, suffering from the loss of Lieutenant Luce and G-04, docks at Solomon for repairs and to resupply. As their time for departure nears, the tragic news of General Rebel's death during the solar ray system attack casts a pall over the crew. Disheartened, the Thoroughbred receives its new orders. Escort Prime Minister Darcia of the Republic of Zeon to the peace treaty signing. Eager for a chance to end this terrible war, the Thoroughbred heads for its rendezvous point with the Prime Minister's ship, the Chive. Captain, it's confirmed. An enemy force is approaching the Chive's rendezvous point. It's not a unit of the Republic. It must be made up of ships that retreated from a power coup. Open a line to the Chive and tell them not to wait for us, but to make a run for Granada. We'll handle the enemy force. The enemy is wounded and desperate, Lieutenant Ford, so be careful. Luckily, we were able to equip your Gundam with the booster unit you picked up at Solomon. You have increased thrust and mobility, but please, use it wisely. Yeah, I know. We have to keep living for those who die. All right. Well, <clears throat> as you heard, we actually do get to use the boost unit in the uh, true storyline for Thoroughbred missions. And does it, to me, when that little cutscene play at the beginning there, it looks like G04, well, really hasn't had any damage done to it. I mean, it exploded on that one right side to begin with. That was where the energy pack was. Granted, they probably tried to repair it, although it was kind of, kind of fucked up pretty good. It was fubard, as it G05, were. G05, Ford away. And with the death of Loose Castle, I think that Ford kind of becomes less of an annoying little kid and more of a, I don't know, just he has more depth to him, I think. He doesn't seem as jovial, and it's kind of a change of pace for it. Anyways, with this mission here, we have to take out some advancing Usai and a couple of mobile suits. One in particular that's interesting, and you just saw it on screen there, and I have a target right now. It's MS-18E or the Catfear, if that's how it's pronounced. I've never really known how that's pronounced. Anyways, for those who've actually seen 0080 uh, War in the Pocket, it is this exact same Xeon mobile suit that was put together on the colony. It is a pain in the ass to fight, and it will rip you apart with this little shotgun if you let it. 
However, damage. once it's dead and gone, there's not much else that the other uh, other mobile suits can do to you. They can, however, do quite a bit of damage to the thoroughbred. Make sure to keep an eye on that little bar or health bar for it at all times and take them out. You're going to have several waves to go through. Just make sure you're right on them and use the booster unit to its full potential. But there's one little thing we still have to make sure to take a look at, and it should be just arriving on stage left. And as you can hear, it is a Musai equipped with an HLV unit. For those that don't know what that is, it's some sort of booster unit as far as I'm aware. I think it was actually meant for escaping atmosphere on the Earth and such, I think. I'm not sure. Anyways, you're going to see a very slow-moving Musai come up aboard side. Uh, right side of the ship itself. If that crosses the no, uh, no bound lines or no return line, mission is over. If the thoroughbred dies, mission is over. So keep an eye out for that ship while trying to defend the thoroughbred. This is probably one of the toughest missions in the thoroughbred mission lineup for that reason, let alone. There's our HLV equipped Musai. Use your spam uh, beam spam to take out some of the weapons so it's not constantly hitting the thoroughbred. And make sure to use your special attack to its fullest. This sucker has a shit ton of armor and you can go through all three of your special power bars if you're not careful for it. And that should be the end of the mission. Take a little more pot shots at it, get some more points, and you're good. That enemy ship out there came from a bower coup. If I had to guess, I'd say Zeon's having a pretty hard time now. Oh, loose. Won't be long till the fighting's over. He definitely shows more of a, a grizzled veteran status there. I managed to pull off an S rank. I actually thought I was doing horrible throughout the mission because the thoroughbred nearly got blown up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, don't let that mission get away from you. It did me on my first play record or test play recording through this. Uh, I really did wipe the floor with me pretty good. Even within Zeon itself, there is opposition to the dictatorship of the Zabi family, with Prime Minister Darcia leading this movement. After rendezvousing with the Prime Minister's ship, the Chive, the Thoroughbred gets underway for Granada, the site of the peace signing. But a Zeon military force, determined to thwart any attempts at a peaceful settlement, waits to intercept it. Captain, Zeon mobile suit approaching from the moon. It's not answering our hail. An enemy from the moon? It's possible these are principality forces that are trying to stop the peace treaty. All hands, protect the Chive, no matter what! You're reloaded and resupplied, Lieutenant Ford. Commence an emergency launch of G-05. Roger. All right, so we are now on the fifth and final mission for the canon storyline in Thoroughbred mode. This, again, has two separate endings for this, depending on how you do in this uh, mission itself. I will be showing off both of them. I think here with this recording, I went through the good or best ending first, so I'll take a look at that and show you the worst one after that. As usual, we're equipped with the booster units, so we've got a shit ton of speed to rely upon, and man, does it come in handy. G05, Ford away. Gonna see some unique mobile suits right off the bat here, and both armor rating and just their unit it type to begin be with. At all costs. Lieutenant Ford, please believe so you're going to start this mission in Route 2 mode. Gun. Don't really bother trying to fire at them like I am. You're not going to hit them. They're in Route 2 mode as well, and the chance of you hitting them is very slim. However, they will come out of you very quickly, so get the hell out of the way. Anyways, that is an MS-17 unit that we are fighting. It's a variation of a Galgu. Those of you who recognize it, it's good for you. I'll probably show it off later on in its little mode. Anyways, destroying all three of those units takes us to part two of this mission. What's this feeling? Suffocation and, and pressure? This one's really different from the other enemy forces. It isn't normal. And there's our second unique mobile suit, the Act Zaku. That thing is incredibly is fast for being thing? a Zaku. And we have to fight off... Uh, it's a brow brow. Whatever the hell it's called. That's what it's called. 
Be careful. The now, says it can attack again, from a different position than keep an eye out on your Chive's health bar here. If the Chive explodes or you die, it's the bad mission or bad ending for you. If you manage to get this mission all the way through, you should be fine. Keep an eye on the Axe Zakus. Take them out as they come through, and you'll be just fine. Once you've taken out the Axe Zakus, go in for close quarters combat on the stupid Bra Bra. It has absolutely no defense on it, and it really is a pushover. It's not even bothering it trying to attack me here, but it does have that all range attack if you let it. Check me. It tried to escape on me here, not, uh, not like it had any luck for it. Once you've taken out the Axakus and the Brow Brow, you will uh, have a new complement of MS 17s and 11s to take on. So that would be Axakus, and I think, uh, oh, I don't remember what 17 is. I used to know most of these part numbers. Not anymore. Oh yeah, that's our special little Gelgu variation there. Now oh, I can see it. There's going to be quite a few of them, but if you can take them out pretty quick, you're not going to have too much of a problem with the Shiva. It'll actually outrun them at one point. I usually like to come in with a couple of well-placed beam shots and finish them off with the beam saber. It's rather quick succession, and it keeps them stunned. Now, the reason I didn't try and go in close to this guy is because he was outside of my sphere of influence, the battle sphere there, and I couldn't actually fly to him. There's a wall there. The mission's a success. Well done, Junior. Alright, and with that, we get the good ending. Yay! A communication from Granada, sir. They're opening negotiations at Amman. It looks like peace. So, it's finally over. This war is finally coming to an end at last. We'd like to welcome Prime Minister Darcia of the Republic of Zeon. We did it, Luz. Oh, I only wish you were here to enjoy this victory with us. Thoroughbred, this is G05, Ford Longfellow. Mission complete. Returning to base. Universal Century 0080. After this battle, all hostilities were suspended. Soon after, a formal peace treaty marking the end of the war between the Earth Federation and the Republic of Zeon was signed. All right, that's it. That's the good ending for the uh, canon storyline there. Now, I'm not sure which of the two endings for the canon storyline are technically the right ones for it. I've never really looked into it. Although I think Ford does go on to become... Uh, pilot with it the titans at first so he has to survive for it so it, i'm pretty sure this ending here that we just saw was the actual one now when you started part two of that mission and the he kind of like felt the brawl uh the mobile armor there it kind of does lead credence to the fact that he's probably a new type if he felt the new type pilot of the mobile armor as they approached Again, I, I'm not a big fan of what a lot of Gundam series do and turn the main protagonist into a new type. Even I like to see old types being able to keep up with everybody else and not necessarily just always do something there. And again, I had that little weird sound bug there where it kind of cut the sound off just for a couple of seconds. I'm not sure why, but anyways, we've seen all of that information, so I just quickly skipped it. For the most part, this will be the last time we use the uh, booster unit, I think. There's only one little thing I want to show off besides the last ending. And we'll get to that. For part one, all you gotta do is this exact same thing. is start taking out the three units that actually show up. The three modified Gelgu. We have to get to part two in order to actually change this whole thing up. So you're gonna start in route two mode and then quickly right go into the combat. Take out the Gelgus in whatever procession you like. The Chive still has a health bar at this point, so if they take a couple shots into it, not a big deal. Because the goal for the end of this mission here is for either you to lose all of your health or for the Chive to lose all of its. Preferably the Chive because it takes a lot less time. But it's kind of a pain in the ass to do with the first portion of the mission because there's only three mobile suits. So I tend to try and just take them out. That way we have the Axe Zakus and the mobile armor to contend with. What's this feeling? Suffocation and, and pressure? 
this one's See, really that just, different from the other enemy forces. That just screams new it type. Normal. Of course it's not normal. Have you looked at the damn thing? Looks like it belongs in a super robot series. What is this terrible thing? All right, so for the most part, I'm just going to beat up on the uh, mobile armor for a bit while the Axok, who's actually going and take the Chive out, that's about it. Not, uh, not too big of a difference here. I tend to just take the mobile armor out to begin with. It's kind of, yeah, this is the all-range attack. It's the biggest pain in the neck that it has. If you're trying to go for the bad inning, I wouldn't recommend getting the support from the unknown pilot because he will, well, it'll just complicate matters. Oh no! Yep, there it goes. Damn it! It couldn't take any. Nice picture of the Akzaku there. Confirmed, sir. We're looking at what's left of the thoroughbred and the chive. The thoroughbred sacrificed itself as a decoy so that we could protect the real Prime Minister Darcy. Universal Century 0080. After this battle, all hostilities were suspended. Soon after, a formal peace treaty marking the end of the war between the Earth Federation and the Republic of Zeon was signed. And that's it. We're done. Um, basically, we went down fighting for the most part, and we ended up being dead. Uh, it turns out the Chive that we were guarding was actually a fake and a decoy, which is kind of cool. So anyways, that basically to that basically concludes the entire thing for Thoroughbred. There's one little thing I want to show off in the first mission, but I'll get to that in the next video. So till then, folks, see you later.